Easy on the smoke. Don't put too much in. All right, watching. Casey, all set? All set. Here we go. We are rolling. Action. The epic historic tale began when author Michael Shera's family went on vacation in 1964. We had been to the New York World's Fair and we made Gettysburg a side trip. I was the Civil War buff. I was 12 years old. I had played with the little soldiers and the bayonets and all this stuff. And we went as tourists mainly for my benefit. I mean, my father had no interest in history. He was not an historian. That surprises a lot of people. Had never written anything historical. I, what happened to my father was a really a stark surprise because he became obsessed. Well, Buster, I guess, it comes as no surprise, my favorite character in Gettysburg and uh, Gods and Generals. Uh, and primarily, I think, for this reason that Michael Shara invented him because he's really um, represents the people that actually did the fighting. When every time people talk about the Civil War, they usually discuss generals, General Lee, General Grant, Jeb Stewart. What he did is he in introduced this character who I think represents not only the infantry, the guys, the grunts that do the fighting, but also the fact that he's an Irish immigrant. And they, of course, there were Irish fighting on both sides. If I may say it, I think he's really like the conscience of the fight. The first day that I saw him on the set, when he was in his wardrobe and his makeup and hair, I mean, I was like, I was really kind of flabbergasted at how great he looked. I mean, he looks like any photograph you've ever seen of Robert E. Lee. My father was from Northern Virginia, and on my mother's side, we were related to Robert E. Lee. So therefore, I figured maybe I could uh, bring some credibility to the part through bloodlines. Right now, I want everybody gone in front of the crane here that doesn't part of the set. Let them all step over there so we can start seeing this shot without a million people in it. The relationship between Jackson and uh, Anna, his wife, uh, is such an interesting relationship because it's, uh, it's deeply, uh, deeply spiritual. There's tremendous romance in there, and it's, that's not a balance we see, that's not an equation. We see all that often, I think, in, in cinema. I think that there's almost a kind of a spiritual eroticism that, that goes on in that relationship, which is very, very true to I, when I read the letters to each other. How could you make this day so beautiful? As Anna, I was thinking, he's changed now. I have to say, in tribute to, to Ron, you could read two scenes, three scenes, you could read only the scenes of this woman and know this character and know her presence in Stonewall's life. I mean, it's so rich. Each scene, frankly, when I read them at home before I'm working on it, I weep. They, they, are, they speak to something profoundly universal about love and dedication, devotion, and faith. Oh! oh. Smile. Now, nobody say anything to Stonewall. Going to, oh, Stonewall. Oh. Yes, he said, out for war, when I go off to war, I want something. Looking at this man as my father, almost, if, you know, in the sense of uh, our relationship, and catch him falling off this horse after he's been shot three times. And we made it very realistic, and, and only by utilizing Stephen's talents in that sequence could we have. I mean, the man gave 150%. Little Sorrow was magnificent in that. I just gigged her around. <laughs> I went through a little bit of the experience on the set of Gettysburg, representing my father, you know, sort of in spirit, and feeling and having people say to me, look around you, everyone that's here is here because of something that your father thought of and put on paper. Now they're here for the same reason because of something I did. I have a very hard time just taking that in stride. That's overwhelming. I mean, I look around at what's going on here and all the trucks and the people and the hundreds of reenactors and the hundreds of crew. And I mean, I can't just say, well, I did this. I mean, I will never do that. It's, I'm just a small part of this. This is, is, has grown beyond anything I ever could have expected. I'm overwhelmed by this. We're going back down to Shenandoah and High. We're
we're in a crisis time right now in this country. Who will rise to the occasion? You know, who will it? Who will it be that we remember a hundred years from now? That's what intrigues me. We have those people who rise to the occasion. That's the story I want to tell. Always, that's the story I want to tell.